Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, today we will continue our discussion uh, still about the fluid static. Uh, last time we already discussed until this. Uh, force balance, uh, the example of force balance. Uh, in this case, we analyze the force that acts upon the uh, surface of a wall, the wall of the dam. And from the figures, we can see that the force experienced by the surface of the walls comes from uh, water side and from the air side. From the air side, the value of the pressure in every part of the surface is similar because uh, it will be the atmospheric pressure, but the value of the pressure on the water side, on different side, of, uh, on different uh, point of the surface will be different because the water have the hydrostatic uh, pressure. Uh, have you checked the video that I have uploaded in the Google Classroom to derive the equation? Yes, sir. Or do you still have any, do you still need uh, any clarification how to derive the equation? So basically, you take the very small area, the gray area, as part of the wall surface. So the height, uh, it should be the H, right? And this one is W. Okay, and then from, uh, okay, the, the, the notation in this figure is, uh, I need to do some correction. At the top of the surface, Z equals zero. At the bottom, Z equals D. So you take any uh, position at the surface, for example, at the H, this one. This one is H, H. So the, the pressure will be atmospheric pressure plus rho G H at this point. This is very small point. So the, uh, sorry, this is very small area. So the distance from the top of the wall until that area will equals H. And the ferries, uh, the, li the limit of the, the height will be the H. Yeah. Jadi uh, luasannya itu kecil sekali, sehingga jarak dari atas sampai luasan tadi itu sama dengan H, posisi H sembarang ya. Kemudian lebarnya karena kecil sekali, anda bisa sebutnya dh. Nah, the pressure at point H, this one, will be the atmospheric pressure because at the top it will be atmospheric pressure times density of the water times g times h. And you know the f will be p times a. But the area since the area is very small, then the f will be p times b a. And this one, P at the M plus rho G H times V D H. So the integration will be this one. Then you do the next integration. The similar case, if you change uh, for this, for this uh, rectangular uh, wall, uh, the width of the wall will be constant, right? If you place any point of H, then at that point, the width of the wall, it's still W. It's constant. <clears throat> but for the second uh, examples, the wall, uh, the shape is the triangular. You have this one, and you have this one. At the top, H equals zero. At the bottom, H equal big H, okay? So at any point, the width will be this one. And then, this is, uh, I always forget, what is segitiga sama kaki in English? Same like triangle? Anyone know? Is it pyramid, sir? Not or pyramid. Cone? Uh, pyramid is cone, right? This is just two dimensional. Two-dimensional uh, area. Equilateral triangle, sir. 
sorry, equilateral. Equilateral. Oke, okay. how about the segitiga sama sisi? Isosceles. Sorry. Isosceles triangle, yang dua sisinya sama, sir. Uh, yang tiga sisinya sama, it sama sisi. This is sama yang tiga sisi. sisinya sama, equilateral triangle, sir. Oh, this one ikut sama sisi. Then? Oh, I, I think the two legs is isosceles, right, Ka? Iso... How to spell it? I-S-O. Which one? I-O. Isosceles. I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S. Kalau salah. Okay, but you know what I mean, right? Okay, for this case, this is the uh, isosceles uh, triangle, segitiga sama kaki. If you see, if you... The figure becomes... Okay. Not same leg, same side, right? Okay, uh, for the... Isosceles uh, triangle. Okay, this is W, and this is H. So the maximum width and the maximum height. But if you take note at any point, for example, this one, this one becomes small W, and this one becomes small H. Can you find out how to correlate W and H in terms of full or maximum W and maximum H? To we just have to differentiate the DA, right, sir? No, no need. I mean, how you correlate small H, small W, big H, and big W. Sir, can you use like the uh, triangle of proportionality? Yes, right. So, this one divided by this one should be the same as this one divided by this one, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why uh, this one should small w. This is small w. So from this proportionality, you can find at any point small h, the small w will be big h times one minus small h divided by big h from the proportionality. You may check and at h equals zero, then uh, small w will be equals big w. And when h equals big h, small w, will be zero. And then, the same. For example, you take, this is H. At this point, this point, the pressure will be a atmospheric from the top of the water surface plus density of water times G times H. H is this one. And then the F will be equals to P D A. D A is the small area that you take slice from the whole area of the triangle, which is P equals D W times D H. And you, you know, uh, you already know the correlation between W and H by using this function. So you change W into H. Okay, so it means I need to do some correction because it's figure, I always forget to this one. This one should be what? D W times the H. Okay, and this one should be this one. Jadi dihapus ya, hal kecil 
di atas itu. And then from this one or this one, then you can take the integration as the same, and you will find this equation. Sir, I have a question, sir. Yes. Itu dapat one minus h over h dari mana, sir? Yang dari, w. Dari rasio ini. Sebenarnya kan small h over big h, eh, small w over big w equals to small h over big h, kan, sir? Ya, yeah. terus, because the... terus big, big h-nya digantinya gimana, sir? Eh, big h-nya, big w-nya gimana, sir? Oh, this one is small w, not big w. Big equals this one, right? Uh, this one. Come on. Or this one. Okay, so w should be h per h time w. Okay, then big w will be. Wait, I forgot. <laughs> If you take this one as this is it. This one. Let me check again later. Because we can, uh, wait, this is the yeah, so should be up. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Last time I can do that, but I forgot. Okay, let me check later. Because you can change this one into H, and later you can get this uh, equation. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, any other question? But you you understand the the problem, right? Then you need to find the correlation between uh, the width as the function of the height from the 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 proportionality of the triangle sir sir mm. yang yang itu sir in the final equation itu h kecilnya not included sir yang h a small h big h bracket one minus small h over big h yang small h yang di paling depan yang satu lapisan integralnya oh. If already in uh, force, then it's it's included because it comes from rho dh dv dh, right? Oh yeah, yeah, benar benar okay, okay. But if still in the a, then the small h is not included. Okay, okay. Kalau yang kemarin mah w-nya dikeluarin ya, sir? Yes, of course, because uh, the the w in width is constant, but at this at this uh, case, the width is also a function of height. Okay, sir. I understand, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Saya jadi Okay, let me check later, okay? And I'll give you the, the, the derivation later. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, do you still have any uh, question about this one? So you need to, to derive the equation the function of uh, the, the force as the function of uh, area. For the same case, if you have rectangular shape uh, wall and the wall is in the slanted position, 
Because actually, if the wall is in the slanted position, the pressure that give, for example, at this point, the pressure that given by the uh, by experience by the wall, it should be perpendicular, right? So this one is the direction of the pressure. Yeah. Jadi kalau uh, anda anda ingat ya yang namanya tekanan, tekanan itu tegak lurus terhadap penampang. So the pressure will be perpendicular to the area. So at this point, the pressure will be this one, and the pressure force this one. Different from this one, right? So the pressure will be this one, and the pressure force will be this one. For example, the water is here. And in this case, the water is here. So the heat will be this one, right? Correct? And for this one, the heat should be this one. Jadi di titik ini, kalau di titik ini, ketinggian airnya berarti yang di sini. But for this one, ketinggian, uh, for the pressure at this point, ketinggian airnya berarti yang di sini. Then how to calculate the value of the force or the pressure at this point? You just calculate the heat from here. You get the pressure, right? However, to calculate the force, but pressure right here, but to calculate the force, you need to take account the angle of the slanted wall. So should be uh, in the normal uh, wall, the norm. I mean the the vertical wall. The value will be here, right? The value of F. But at this point, the value pressure or the value of the uh, force will be T. E. Kalau arahnya ke sini, dirubah ke sini, jadi apa? Sin. Sin. Okay. Or F sin. Theta is this one. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Should be this one. Okay, begini. Yang sama dengan sudut ini adalah yang ini kan ya? Yes, so this one is correct. This one, the value of this force will be P sin theta, or uh, the, the value of the pressure is P sin theta, and the value of the force is F sin theta. Or you can calculate H is also L sin theta. So you normalize from the slanted position into the normal uh, vertical position. Then the derivation uh, should be the same as the normal vertical uh, wall, but you do just you need to add the sin theta as the correction for the uh, direction of the force or pressure. Sir, question, sir. Yep. How how do you, how do you get the F, sir? Because the height is how do you determine the height where you can get the F, you know, and the P? Maksudnya? Kayak kan tadi kan Mister ngomong kan yang penting it's like uh, how you get the pressure rho g h nya h nya itu dari paling atas sampai a certain point, right? How do you get that certain point, sir? The certain point is, uh, okay, uh, I'll explain. If the wall is slanted, if you want to calculate the pressure at this point, okay, 
it comes from this one. Betul nggak? Tapi kan ininya nggak ketahuan ya. You cannot point out this one, right? What you can point out is the height that same as this one. Oke? Okay? Iya benar sih. Ya. Jadi sebetulnya, oke, okay, I'll explain in Indonesian first. Sebetulnya yang bekerja pada titik ini itu adalah gaya yang dari sini. Tapi itu kan bisa dari sini, bisa dari sini, bisa dari sini, dari sini kan? Iya yes, sih. Nah, menghitungnya dari, oke, okay, I understand your question. It's difficult to uh, take note this direction. So you calculate the force or the pressure from the same direction as this one. This point, you can calculate this one, right? Same, right? But then the value yes, of this point is not perpendicular to the wall, so you need to correct it with this angle. It becomes a sin theta. Same, right? This angle and this one. Okay. S in theta dapatnya W atau ya, sir? Yang itu the height dari paling atas sampai that point, isn't it? Bener nggak, sir? Gimana, gimana? Kalau misalnya P sin theta, you will get the W, kan? Dari yang paling atas sampai that point. Dari Is that true, sir? Ya, ya. Dari yang paling, from the surface to this point. But? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. So, you need to, to add P atmospheric again. Oke. Okay. Masih ada pusing sih, sir. Kayak kurang kurang kayak gimana ya, sir? Kalau misalnya mau dapetin ini, tinggal pakai gini, gini, gini gitu ya, sir. Uh, okay. Just, just okay. remember that the direction of the pressure should be perpendicular. So the value of the pressure that experienced by this point should come from this direction, right? Yes, sir. Compared to the normal vertical uh, wall, at this point, this one. So the height of the point, uh, I mean, the pressure the hydrostatic pressure from the water at that point have similar height. But if the wall is slanted, this point, this is the surface, the height is this one. So the pressure direction or the force direction is this one. It will be higher, for example, right? H di sini dengan H di sini sama. For example, H at this point and H at this point is the same. Which one is higher, the pressure? Sorry, sir? If you have oh. a more vertical wall and slanted with this one, and the depth of the water is the same between these two uh, wall is H. Jadi kalau tinggi tinggi dari titik ini ke permukaan itu sama dengan tinggi dari titik ini ke permukaan. Pressure nya sama tuh kan? Yes, let's you understand right? Now I okay sir, I, I understand now sir. Jadi all you need to do is just find the height because they're in the same medium right sir? Yes, correct. Okay. Just the direction is different. Correct, correct. Uh, sir, so P sine theta itu uh, P sine theta is equal to rho g h h yang dari uh, the surface until that point. Is is that true, sir? Yeah. So this is the normal 
the normal height compared to the horizontal of the surface. L itu ini. So L will not be, L will not be the same as the height of the surface, right? Yes, sir. Okay, ngerti, sir. Ngerti, ngerti. Okay. So as long as the height is the same, that you got the point, right? As long as the height of the fluid is the same, that the hydrostatic pressure given by the fluid to the wall is the same, no matter the the condition of the wall. Okay, yeah. Anda tinggal rubah, you just need to uh, make correction between the position, the height of the wall, compared to the height of the surface. Mungkin kalau itu lebih bisa dipahami ya, lebih gampang dipahami. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. Okay. Any other question from the other students? Okay. Now, uh, let me go back to this one. Sorry. You remember the F uh, force from the air, this one, right? And force from the water have this value. And actually, this is cancel out each other. So basically, if you want to take the, or you want to calculate the sigma force experienced by the wall, sigma force, uh, sigma force, or the uh, force difference comes from the each side of the wall. Then actually, it's you need only to consider the pressure difference, the hydrostatic pressure difference experienced by the water. Betul nggak ya? Jadi kalau Anda mau menghitung uh, selisih gaya atau sigma gaya yang dialami oleh dinding, sigma gayanya muncul dari mana? Dari tekanan dari air dan tekanan dari udara. Sebetulnya yang Anda perlu perhatikan itu hanya tekanan hidrostatik atau selisih tekanan hidrostatiknya si udara saja, eh si air saja. P atmosferiknya toh akan saling menghilangkan. Sir, I have another question, sir. Yeah, okay. Kalau misalnya diperhitungkannya yang selisihnya, the difference, yes. does it mean that the difference is the gauge pressure, sir? Yes, this is the gauge pressure. This is it. Okay. The gauge pressure is the rho gh only. Rho gh from water. Okay, thank you, sir. It's not that the H is different, right? So if you have uh, any uh, kind of surface, the type of the surface, mau kotak, mau segitiga, gitu ya. You just need to use the gauge pressure of hydrostatic. Correct. At the surface, it will be zero. The atmospheric pressure, right? Because the, the atmospheric pressure at the, uh, at the surface of the water, it will be atmospheric pressure, it will be zero. And also from the other side of the wall, it will be atmospheric pressure. So you just need to consider the gauge pressure of the hydrostatic. This is just the mathematical uh, manipulation. Then F total or sigma F will be pressure times uh, dA. So dA is small area you, you take account. And then dA will, uh, the pressure will be uh, Rho B H times B H, and then you multiply by A for A, okay? Okay, and then you divide it. Uh, you got the integration H D A by integration of D A will be this one, and this one will be Height of the center of the mass. Makanya kemarin bisa dihitung dari center of the mass, titik berat. So the F total, the sigma F, at any point H, uh, 
sorry, not any point H, uh, correction. So sigma F at all area of any surface will be P rho G times H, but the H is the H of the center of the mass from the Z equal H equal zero at the surface times total area of the surface. Ya, jadi sigma gaya yang bekerja pada seluruh permukaan itu akan sama dengan densitas fluidanya, fluida, uh, fluida airnya ya, dikalikan gravitasi, dikalikan tinggi dari permukaan sampai titik beratnya. Baru nanti dikalikan luas total permukaan. Oke, okay. any question? It's okay, sir. It's the, it's the same concept as the dam that you described yesterday, right? Yes. Where you multiply it to the center of gravity yes. of the wall, right? Okay. So in general case, for the dam, the wall is rectangular, or sometimes the wall is triangular. But at this this general case, the wall has uh, irregular shape. So you need to know where is the center of the uh, titik berat of the irregular force, irregular shape. Then after you find out the uh, center of the gravity, and then you take the distance from the surface to that point. That will be the HC. Then you calculate the total area of the irregular shape and then the sigma f will be this one. Isang banget ya, hitung begini ya, but that's the way. Okay. So this is the application of uh, combining uh, force balance and hydrostatic pressure. Okay, before I continue, just remember again uh, the concept in hydrostatic pressure. Okay. The concept of hydrostatic pressure that we already uh, learned first is absolute and bridge pressure. What will be the difference? Absolute is total. Total means the actual total uh, pressure at, of the system at certain uh, height, right? So it will be including atmospheric pressure. Okay, but the gauge pressure will be just the difference between the total and the atmospheric pressure. That's the first concept. And then the second concept in fluid static will be hydrostatic. It means pressure of the fluid will be depending on the density of the fluid times gravity times H. At any point, the hydrostatic pressure will be same as long as one, the depth is the same, and the fluid is the same. That's the concept you learn when you calculate the hydrostatic pressure. Okay, and then the others is the force. Balance. Sigma F. Force balance, if the fluid is in static condition, the sigma F should be 
Kalau Frida-nya diam, gaya-gaya yang bekerja pada Frida tadi akan sama dengan zero here. Zero. You remember again to derive the force balance or any other types of balance, you need to have the control volume. The three dimensional shape that you need to define to calculate the force direction. For example, last time we discussed about uh, box shape, right? And you will have pressure from the above and pre uh, pressure from the bottom and also weight. That's the three concept in hydrostatic, uh, in fluid static. Okay. Now the application is what you call buoyancy or uh, gaya aku in Bahasa Indonesia. So for example, you have a solid ball and then you put it into the water. So you, you have solid object, uh, you put it into the water and then it's uh, inside the water, the solid is not moving. Yeah, jadi, benda padat Anda masukkan ke dalam air, kemudian di dalam air benda itu diam. Melayang-layang, but it's in the still position. Not go up or not go down. What does it mean? If the solid object is in still condition, it means that Static, sir. Yeah, in static condition, it means that sigma f equals to zero. Yeah, so it means the force experienced by the solid object will be equals zero. So what kind of force experienced by this solid object? Based on what you have learned from previous uh, lecture. Gaya apa saja? Uh, There is the weight. The weight force. Okay. Pressure from the top of the fluid. Okay. Pressure from top. And? From the bottom of the fluid. <laughs> Correct. Same right uh, as the previous fluid static uh, force balance. So basically, the force that experienced by the solid object will be the weight force because the solid has weight and then the pressure from the above the direction is downward and the pressure from the fluid uh, upward how to calculate the pressure force you can calculate the pressure force if you know the value of the pressure and you know the value of the area so for example If you do, if the shape is a ball, then the area will be the surface area of the ball. Half will be experienced pressure from above, and then half will be experienced pressure from below. To simplify the calculation, now we can calculate what we call buoyancy force. So buoyancy force actually replacing the calculation of the differences of the pressure from above and pressure from below. Ya. Jadi gaya apung itu sebetulnya merupakan selisih gaya tekan ke bawah dengan gaya angkat ke atas, gaya tekan ke atas. So the the force experienced by the uh, solid wall will be the weight force, the direction is downward, minus buoyancy force. The buoyancy force will be, the direction will be always upward because it will, uh, yeah, uh, itu adalah gaya yang mengangkat si benda. The force that given by the fluid to sustain the, uh, the solid object. So you do not need to calculate the pressure and the pressure force anymore. So the buoyancy force is an upward force that exerted by the fluid opposes the weight of the immersed 
solid object. So the direction will be upward. And it is, uh, it will, uh, it is caused by the pressure difference. I have uh, explained to you. So the buoyancy force, how to calculate? It is the density of the fluid, okay, times gravity, times the volume of the object or volume of the solid, but only uh, part of the solid that's inside the fluid. So not all the whole volume of the solid, but only part of the volume that inside the fluid. So for this example, all the solid objects are immersed in the fluid. So the volume of the solid to calculate the buoyancy force will be all the volume. But if some part of the solid object is not in the water or not in the fluid, so you just need to calculate part of the volume only. Okay. Then the sigma force will be, this one is weight force. Weight force is weight times gravitation, right? Mass times gravitation. Then mass is density of the solid times all the volume of the solid times gravitation. So this one should be, and this one should be, So, okay, then you can derive into this one. So the net force, the sigma F experienced by the solid objects will be, the, uh, will be depending on the difference of the solid density and fluid density. So I have a question here. Yep. For the force in the weight, uh, the row and the volume, that one is also uh, needs to be immersed in water, is it? The weight force. Yeah, does, does, that, does that need to be immersed in water, is it? Uh, Anda menanyakan gaya berat atau yang gaya apa? Yang gaya berat, sir, the weight. Okay, so for the weight force, all the volume of the solid should be considered. So this one is all. But for the buoyancy force, you need to check which part is immersed. But for this context, all is immersed, right? So this one should be same. Jadi tergantung nanti barangnya ada di mana, benda padatnya ada di mana. Okay, let me continue first. So from this equation, you can see that the force, the sigma force experienced by the solid object will be depending on the differences of the solid and fluid density. So if the solid will, like this one, the density of the solid is the same as density of the fluid, then the sigma force is zero. If the sigma force is zero, then this ball will be remain in its position. But if the density of the solid is higher than density of the fluid, sigma force is positive, right? Sigma force is positive, then the direction of the force will be downward. So the ball will go downward. Sebaliknya, if the density of the solid less than density of the fluid, then the sigma force will be negative, and the direction of the force will be upward. So the solid solid uh, ball will be moved upward. So you will have three conditions, right? Whether it's a floating, suspended or sinking. For the suspended and the sinking, PS will be in buoyancy force, PS will be all volume for this one. But if you have floating, then you just need to calculate this one. Yeah, jadi kalau kasusnya barangnya itu, benda padatnya itu melayang atau tenggelam, berarti volume yang diperhitungkan untuk gaya apung itu seluruh volume benda. Tapi kalau barang yang mengapung, berarti kan sebagian ada yang di air, sebagian ada yang di udara. 
So the volume that you need to consider to calculate the buoyancy force is only part of the solid that immersed in the fluid. But for the weight force, is all the volume. Should be clear enough, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Or do you still have any question? It should be a simple, uh, quite a easy concept to understand, right? Just remember again that when you already calculate the buoyancy force, you do not need to calculate the pressure force because it's already replacing the pressure force. Okay, you have exercise, uh, please do it uh, by yourself. But at this, at this case, uh, this is the ice. Ice got certain density. It will float in the water. So for the weight force, again, you need to calculate all the volume of the ice. All. But for the buoyancy force, it's only volume of ice that inside the water. Then you can do the calculation. Because it's in the still position, it's static, right? Static floating. Then sigma f equals zero. Sigma f is weight force minus buoyancy force. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, now we go to the last part of the fluid static discussion. Uh, we will discuss about different types of uh, pressure measuring device. Okay, first is barometer. We call barometer. Uh, what barometer measured is the atmospheric pressure. How? Uh, it can calculate the atmospheric pressure. So the simple barometer basically just a very uh, a long tube and then you fill it with, for example, certain type of uh, fluid, for example, mercury. Then you put downward and then you insert into the bucket filled with mercury or so. What will the mercury do? The mercury will fill the tube until certain position. Above the mercury, it will be air, and the pressure at point C, at the top height of the mercury, it will be zero. Or it will be vacuum. So, from this arrangement, you can say that first zero, because it's already vacuum, Pressure at point B will be at point here. It will be the same as here and here, right? So at point B, yes, so it will be atmospheric pressure. Then you do the force balance in this segment. The force balance will be apa. If the area of the tube is A, so the force balance will be, so the downward is positive, upward is negative, Dc times A, plus with force, minus Pb times A, correct? Yeah, the force from the top part will be PC. 
times the area. The direction is downward. Then the force from the bottom is PB. The direction is upward. And then once uh, another uh, type of force is the weight force. Weight force will be the density of the mercury. Okay. Times G times H times A. This will be M. H and A will be volume of the mercury, right? Rho times V will be mass. So mass times G will be the force. So this one will be equal zero. This one equals this one. And PB is the atmosphere. And then you can have uh, the value of the atmospheric pressure. The density is the density of the mercury. H is the height between the point C and point B. That's the simple calculation of barometer. So barometer is the device that used to calculate the value of atmospheric pressure. Ya, jadi barometer itu mengukur tekanan atmospheric lokal. Caranya ya, ditaruh saja, kemudian e, tabungnya dibalik, sehingga nanti dia akan menunjukkan ketinggian. Dari raca gaya dan konsep hidrostatika, Anda bisa dapat ini. Bahwa tekanan atmosferik pada kondisi tertentu, itu akan sebanding dengan ketinggian barometer. Sir, A is the cross-sectional area, ya, Sir? Yep. Oke, okay. oke. Okay. Okay, just do the calculate uh, the example. It's already have the uh, solution. And the second types that's norm, uh, another device that normally used to calculate the pressure is manometer. The difference from barometer, manometers calculate the pressure difference between two points. Which point? Between each of the legs. So, for example, you have the system, a chamber filled with a pressurized gas, and then you put the manometer. The manometer got the density, uh, got fluid inside the manometer. So, this is the fluid inside the manometer, the orange one. And then after experience pressure from the system, then the, the fluid will raise up. So, there will be difference in height between position one and position this one. Okay, how about pressure at one and point two? Pressure at point one and point two? Is it's it equal, sir? Yes. Why it's the same? Because the height is the same. The height is the same and the fluid is the same. But actually, pressure at point one is also representing the pressure of the gas of the chamber. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Then, how about pressure at point three, for example? Point three will be, because it's open to the air, it will be atmospheric pressure. So, pressure at point two, by using the uh, concept of hydrostatic, will be the atmospheric pressure plus density times H times G. Ini densitas apa? The row in here is which density? Gas density or the orange density? The orange, sir? Yeah, this is the density of the fluid inside the manometer. So the, density, uh, the pressure at point two will equals this one. This one will be equals P1. This is equals gas pressure. So the manometer is calculating the pressure difference. Okay, do the exercise by yourself, okay? 
later if you have any question like uh, converting the units you can ask me uh, okay similar with the concept of the hydrostatic this is a bit different it's not a pressure measuring device if you have layers of fluid for example three layers and each fluid is not uh, mixed with other not in, uh, it's invisible then pressure at point one point one is at the base of the uh, tank will be the atmospheric pressure times the hydrostatic pressure of each layer. Itu saja ya. Jadi kalau ada tumpukan fluida tidak saling campur, maka tekanan yang paling bawah itu ya tinggal tekanan atmosferik ditambah tekanan hidrostatika masing-masing fluida. How to calculate the hydrostatic pressure of each fluid? Then we just do the this one. Okay. Okay. If at uh, at previous example, uh, manometers uh, calculate the pressure of the chamber or of the gas in the chamber. Another application of manometer is to calculate the pressure difference in flowing fluid. So, for example, fluid is flowing in this direction, and then you make a tapping yeah, hole in two parts of the pipe, so at point one and at point two, and then you connect point one and point two into the manometer. Again, the manometer is filled with uh, certain uh, fluid, the density is rho two in this, in these figures, and the density of the fluid inside the pipe, or this one is the same, rho one. So even though the the fluid is moving in the pipe, but at the manometer segment, the fluid are in static position, right? Yeah. Jadi walaupun fluida yang di dalam pipa itu ngalir, fluida yang ada di dalam manometer itu tetap air dan fluida manometernya itu static. Since both water and the manometer fluid is in are in static condition then you can apply the hydrostatic pressure concept how about the pressure at one and two is it the same one is here two is here I don't know, sir. I think it's different. Why it's different? Because the manometer tells tells us so, sir. Okay. It looks different. <laughs> okay. For example, if the fluid inside the manometer so shows like in the figures, so in the right light, the the orange uh, fluid is higher than uh, left light, right? So the pressure between point one and point two should be different. Which one is higher? Pressure one, sir. Okay, pressure one. Anyone agree? Or anyone disagree? Why pressure one is higher? Because pressure one pushes the orange fluid more than pressure two, sir. Okay. Right. So pressure one gives the pressure higher than point two, and also you know that the fluid is flowing from left to right. So the pressure on the left should be higher than the pressure on the right. Otherwise, the flow is backward, right? So by using the principle of the hydrostatic, you can point out that the pressure at A and B is the same height, right? Pressure at A will be same as pressure at B. Pressure at A will be pressure at point one plus density of the water times G times total heat. Heat is calculated from the horizontal baseline. So plus A 
plus h. Ya, tinggi dari satu ke a itu kan total ya dari sini. A plus h. B will be pressure at point two plus rho g a because it's water plus rho nanometers g h because it's already the manometer v. Then V A equals V B. Then you can calculate the pressure difference. Okay. Since the manometers inside the manometers, the fluid are all in the static. Then you can apply this concept. Okay. Another type of the pressure different, a uh, pressure uh, measuring device is what you call Borden tube. Have you seen this type of uh, Borden tube? Pernah lihat nggak alat seperti ini di mana? Uh, di tangki gas kalau misalnya itu apa? LPG, LPG stuff sir. Yes, of course. At home, if you have a gas stove, it will be connected to the gas cylinder, right? So it will connect it to this kind of Borden tube. So the Borden tube basically still calculating the pressure difference between the inside chamber to the local atmospheric because behind it will connect it to the atmospheric. But to convert the pressure difference, it will be converted to the movement of the this part. Yeah. Jadi yang dibaca adalah perbedaan tekanan di dalam dengan di luar. Dia ada bagian di bagian belakang at the back side it will be connected to outlet pressure but the pressure difference will be correlated to the movement of the uh, the plate. For the manometer the pressure difference will be converted into the plate, right? But this one it will be converted to the movement of the plate. So when the plate is moved, then it will direct it to the needles pointing the numbers. Yeah, so simple itu. Jadi kalau di sini beda tekan tetap yang diukur antara di dalam dengan di luar, tapi beda tekannya itu nanti akan dibaca sebagai pergerakan ini. Plat ini bergerak, jarumnya akan ikut bergerak. Nanti akan menunjukkan angka tertentu. Okay, any question first? It's all good, sir. Okay, so this is the end part of the fluid static. Uh, before we go into the next chapter, we still have time, right? Uh, let uh, have a short break first, and then I will continue uh, about the fluid flow.